everybody, I am Shitanshu from Dream Abroad to welcome you to the first video of this video series DA Talks. DA, of course, Dream Abroad. In this video series, we will be talking to experts from different sectors and their advices can definitely help you settle in Canada. We'll be also doing some success stories of people who have successfully made it to Canada through the express entry system or any other PNP system and how they found the job, the success stories. Now this first video is about the real estate market in Canada. You would be hearing from Mr. Matt Rooney, our famous real estate agent in Waterloo, Kitchener region. All my questions would be focused on the first time home buyers, what they think, what their questions might be. So let's not waste any more time. Let me go straight to his office so that we can have a quick chit chat. I'm sure it would be very interesting. Hey Matt. Hey. How are you doing? I'm great, how are you? I'm good nice as well. Nice to meet you. Same, yeah. Come on in, come on in. Right, so uh, welcome Matt. We have Matt here with us who's a real estate agent here in the Waterloo, uh, Kitchener region. So I'll let Matt introduce himself. Okay, uh, my name is Matt Rooney. I'm a real estate agent here in Waterloo region, as Shatanchu said. I work for a real estate brokerage called Remax Twin City. Uh, I'm pretty excited Shatanchu reached out to me uh, to do this interview with you. We recently started a YouTube channel. We're coming out with a great five video series for people looking to relocate to the area. So this was a uh, perfect timing. So if in case you want to know more about the real estate, the in-depth knowledge of real estate, he'll provide you in his videos, in his YouTube channel. You can find the link in the description box below. So yes, let's begin uh, with our first question. People coming in from India, you know, Pakistan, these kind of places. When people come in, move in over here, the first question which comes to their mind is that, you know, yes, they have to buy a property, but when is the right time? Should they wait like, two or three years or should they go right away in searching for a new house to buy? Sure. I mean, I have to imagine when they come over or anyone immigrates to Canada, you, your first priority would probably be finding a job. But I would say once you feel financially secure or, or you have a job, that your, my next move would be to go and buy an apartment versus renting. Um, if you're renting and you're paying 1600 1700 bucks a month, you're just putting that money into someone else's pockets. Whereas if you were to choose to buy your home, that sixteen or seventeen hundred bucks would be going back towards your equity. You're building equity in your home, so at least down the road, when you go to sell your house, you get all that money back. Um, if you're renting again, it's, you're doing that for someone else. So you suggest that once we are settled over here, like by settled, I mean you know once we have spent like you know a few months, at least you know six seven months or right. you know, or a year or so. Get get to know the area a little bit first, but then. Yes. Then I would say pull the trigger on, on, on a condo. Or At least apartment. start searching for home uh, after sure. that. Because it will take, you know, time. Yeah, it'll, to do take, research it'll take you to some time. Where you want to get a home, which what kind of home you want to get. So these kind of things. Yeah, and you're going to want to know what things are selling for and what, can you, what you can afford and all sorts of things like that. So yeah, six months in, start taking a peek. For buying a property, how much down payment should we actually consider? So in Canada, you have to have 5% down to buy a home. Um, that's the minimum? That's the minimum. You can put as much down as you like on a house. You can buy it in cash. If you manage to save 20% down, you can avoid what's called loan insurance or mortgage insurance. If you have less than 20% down, you're going to have to insure your mortgage. Um, it, it sort of tiers what, how much you would have to pay, but if you only had 5% down and you were purchasing a home for 400000 you could be paying about 15000 in loan insurance, which will be tacked onto your mortgage. So if I think in generic terms, like let's say uh, we're going to get a house in, uh, which is, which costs us like uh, 500,000. Okay. Uh, so we should have a minimum of 5%, uh, you said? Yeah. Which means uh, 25,000. 25, yeah. And uh, to avoid that home insurance, we should- To avoid, lo to avoid loan insurance, if you were buying a $500,000 home, you would need to put $100,000 there. $100,000. Yeah. So which in Indian, Currency would be something like 50 lakh rupees. So that's a big amount. So if you have that thing in mind, you know, have something getting through your mind before you move to Canada that you should have that kind of money. Uh, but yes, you can start with just 5%, which is not that big of an amount, right? First time home buyers often only put down 5%. It's rare that they have the 20% saved. Right. 
Okay, so this brings me to another question. Uh, the benefits that the government has to offer for the first-time home buyers. Sure. Um, the federal government just changed this. It, it used to be 25000 You are now able to take 35000 out of your RRSPs to put towards a down payment or towards the purchase of a home. You have to repay that money within 15 years, however, but that's tax-free that you can take out of your RRSP. We also have, uh, for first-time home buyers, a, f a refund or a rebate on your land transfer tax, up to $4,000, up to $4,400 in Toronto, actually. Um, we have municipal programs. Every municipality will have its own program, but they're essentially a forgivable loan towards your down payment. You have to meet certain criteria in, in each municipality. You municipality. And um, you can only make so much a year, but basically if you buy your first house, they'll give you the 5% down. You have to return that money with if you sell that house within 20 years. Okay. So what are the tips for the first time home buyers that you have to give? Uh, should they prefer the new construction? Should they go for an old construction or resale or how they should go along with it? I imagine if you're a first time home, it, is, it really does depend on your own finances, but I imagine that if you're a first time home buyer, you could find something more affordable in a resale home over a newly constructed home. Also, if you're buying a newly constructed home or a new build, you're going to be on the builder's timeline. So you buy that now, you may not get it for a year, you may not get it for 14 months, could be anything. Whereas a resale home typically close within 90 days of the purchase. 90 days, it's pretty fast. Okay, so uh, what are the pros and cons of uh, buying an apartment or a condominium versus a townhouse? So, you know, when I think of getting a house in Canada, the first thing that actually came into my mind that I would go for a condominium because I mean, it's totally you no know, tension free. You don't have to worry about anything. Uh, we just have to think about you know paying our you know mortgages and we are good to go. But when we are actually when we want to get the townhouse, there are dozen things with you know which keep which comes into my mind. So what do you suggest? What are the pros and the cons of getting a townhouse versus a condo? Versus a condo. Apartment? Yeah. Sure. So a condo sounds nice. The the pros are definitely that. Your condo fees are covering your building insurance, someone else is shoveling your driveway, someone else is mowing your lawn. You're just covered and you have a lot of peace of mind. That being said, you could be spending somewhere from 200, 300, all the way up to six to 700 bucks a month in condo fees. Whereas if you were to go buy a home or a townhouse without those condo fees, you now have that money to put towards either the cost of your home or towards your savings or to paying off your mortgage earlier. The downside to the townhouse then obviously becomes now you're responsible for all of that maintenance. You're going to have to insure your own building. You're going to have to mow your lawn. You're going to have to shovel your driveway. So that's $600, $700 per month, you said, right? Yeah, per That's month. similar to what we pay in India, like uh, the maintenance fee, what we say in India. So we have to pay here like every month. It depends from one apartment, one condominium to the other. But yes, we do have to pay it every month. And there's a chance that it will increase down the line. It will almost guaranteed to increase down the line. As as that building gets older and more things need to be done to it, like it needs new windows all throughout or it needs a new roof, that money has to come from somewhere. And so they, they'll budget accordingly that each year your reserve fund grows just a little bit more, which also ultimately means every condo owner is going to have to chip in more money. So it's definitely beneficial to get a townhouse, right? You said a, free, a freehold home, yeah, freehold. where you don't have condo homes. Okay, yeah, okay. Right, so uh, the next question would probably be a longer one. What is the complete, you know, step-by-step -step process to get a home straight away from, you know, if you think of searching a home from the first step and this last step would be getting the keys to move in. Getting the keys to move in. Yep. Sure, so I would say the first thing you need to do is speak to a mortgage specialist. Go to your bank or find a private lender. You need to know what your financial situation is and what they're telling you you can afford at what interest rate. Um, once you have that locked in, go and find a real estate agent. Um, that real estate agent is going to help you navigate the market that you're in. But essentially, once you've spoken to your mortgage specialist, you'll have an idea what you can afford. You can then ask that real estate agent to show you everything in that price range. And once they've shown you sort of what your money can get you, then you can narrow your list down a little bit by saying, well, I need at least three bedrooms or I need a garage or I want a big yard. And then the real estate agent can then apply those criteria to what we're searching for. You can find out certain neighborhoods you want to look in, and you can really narrow down the search. After you've seen about 
10 or 20 homes, I think the average is somewhere around 10 or 12 homes, you'll find the home that, that you love. And you'll go and make the offer on that house. So it's going to get drawn up on a contract called an agreement of purchase and sale. Assuming that everything goes well, you make this offer to the homeowner, they accept your offer. Now you, now you have a conditionally sold home probably where you have some conditions you need to meet before the deal closes. And that might be having your bank, bank sign off on financing, or maybe you ask for a home inspection, so you want to walk through the house and, and make sure that everything's up, up to snuff. Um, once that home inspection is complete or those conditions are met, then you sign off on them, and now you're in what's called the sold pending stage. And during this time, you're going to hire a lawyer who's going to go over your paperwork. He's going to run a title search on your property to make sure there are no liens or encumbrances. Um, you're going to want to switch your utilities over, have all your mail directed to the new address, just cover the list of things that you would normally do before you moved into a place. If you want furniture, go buy your furniture. And then about a day or two before your house closes, you're going to do a final walkthrough to make sure the house is in the same condition it was when you first purchased it. And then the day after that, you're going to get the keys and you're going to head home. Cool. So um, let's say we have finalized the home which we want to get. Mm -hmm. And we want to get the keys. So what will be the time frame of the complete process right from finalizing the home to getting the home, to getting the keys of the home? Okay, so this does vary depending on who's involved, but typically they're somewhere between 30 and 90 days. Okay. I mean, if, if you bought a home from me and I bought a home off of John down the street, John wanted to close two months from now, so then I have to close two months from now because I have to take possession of his house and move out of my house, which sort of means you're going to have to move in two months because we're just trying to match up all of these moves. Um, but I would say on average, it's 30 to 90 days. So the best can be done in 30 days. Like if you want you somebody, can go someone you can wants go to faster. move. Oh, is it? You can go, you could do it in two weeks. It's oh. just your lawyer has to, has to start working immediately and you better hope they have the time. It's a crunch to get every to move out of a home and into a home in two right, weeks. Obviously. So thirty days would be more ideal as a minimum. Cool. <laughs> All right. So coming over to the next point, the property rates. Obviously, people are concerned. What are the property prices in in Canada? You know. Obviously, it would be very difficult if we you know talk of the complete Canada. It's not possible. So if we talk of the Toronto GTA region or the uh, Waterloo region. So he's an expert in the Waterloo region. Uh, so what will be the prices of the one bedroom condominium or uh, one bed like our townhouse in GTA region versus here in the Waterloo region? Sure. So I mean, taking out the downtown core of Toronto from this because they're just insanely expensive. Uh, the average one bedroom in and around the GTA is about four hundred and fifty thousand, whereas in Waterloo region right now it's about three hundred and fifty thousand. If okay. you were to jump into a two-bedroom, let's say, you'd be looking at about 550000 in in the GTA, and you'd be looking at more like four hundred to four twenty-five in Waterloo region. And then if you wanted to move from there to a townhouse, a townhouse in, in Toronto is about 850000 to start, or on average, I should say. And around here, you're probably looking at something at more like four twenty-five to four fifty. And when we say GTA region, which regions in specific are you talking about? So if you get rid of the downtown core around Toronto, you have Markham, Vaughan, Richmond Hill, Mississauga. Things get a little less expensive as you get away f from Toronto. So Mississauga may not be as expensive as Richmond Hill, let's say. Um, but I you got your Brampton. What else is around Toronto there? Oakville, but now you're really starting to get away from Toronto, so I would say that those are probably the main areas. Okay, and how much time it would take to reach the downtown? Because most of the offices would be there in downtown, so... Right, so I'm imagining that you're not driving because that would be a nightmare. So if you're going to take the bus and the subway, these houses are 40 minutes, 45 minutes from the downtown core. Okay, so that is the average, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so the probably the last question, uh, which would be... Is there any particular time of the year that the buyer should actually prefer for uh, getting a home? Is there any, like, any time when the prices actually go down a bit? No. Uh, or, I mean, that supply demand. So, so, so in spring, supply r rises. So April, May, June, people just start selling their houses all the time, and su supply has a chance to rise and, and catch up with demand. It's a hot time to for houses. A ton of properties are sold during that time. And then 
as August comes along, it slows down a little bit. People get ready to go back to school. They have to get their kids ready. They don't want to make a move. And then the fall market hits, September, October, a bit of November. And that's another great time to, to buy or sell. December, nobody wants to do anything. In the dead of winter, we find that the market slows down a bit. Nobody wants to leave their house. They're stuck in an ice storm. Um, but spring and fall. Jeff, definitely spring is the busiest time of year, though. Okay. And is that the best time to get, like, does the prices also vary that time of time? No, the prices follow a general trend that doesn't change at any given time of year. Um, what you would actually might want to watch more than that are what interest rates are. Interest rates happen to just drop f for us, so we're back down to about 3.1%, 3%. That's going to encourage people to buy versus more than the time of year. All right, so thanks a lot, Matt. So guys, he was Matt for you, a real estate agent here in the Waterloo. So he has his own channel, as I told you, you can go over there and uh, look up to his videos. If you have any queries, I might not be the right guy to answer all questions about the real estate, uh, the property in GTA or this region around the Waterloo region here. So you can go over to his channel and ask us and ask your queries and I would request Matt because he has his own YouTube channel so he can come over to my channel to reply to your queries. Probably you would do, do to a few of those comments. Can you do that for me? Yeah, I'll do my best. All right, thanks a lot uh, for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please click the subscribe button. And yes, go over to his channel and click the subscribe button for his channel as well. Thanks a lot, guys. Meet you again very soon. Thanks, man. Pleasure.